Hey everybody, BTO Pro here. Been a while since I did one of these. I haven't really been sleeping lately. And the rest of the team has been kicking butt and taking names because we got a lot of people working on this thing. So I decided I'd stop for a minute, show what it is I'm talking about. Uh, so consider this a sneak peek, sneak peek of what will be at DrupalCon this year. So uh, I've been working on this project called Hacks. If you haven't been paying attention, which means you don't use Twitter because I don't shut up about it on Twitter, much to the annoyance of everyone I know. But I'm going to fire up my little demo space here. Basically, I've been using web components to build some pretty stinking neat things. So um, one of those neat things, decoupled authoring system. And so you can check this out at hackstheweborg if you want. But effectively, everything you're about to see is running in the browser just via a bunch of HTML tags. Um, so this is actually a little documentation site. You can check it out um, and see. I can reach out and I can do some basic text operations. Woo hoo, right? We've been able to do inline editing and stuff even in things like CK Editor. So what's the big deal? Why do, why do I think this is our way of battling? Ah, oh, gosh, what's that thing again? can't think of what it is. What, it, what is that, that, that? There's another project out there. Can you, just, it's eluding me right now. It's something, something, ah, uh, what, what would it be? I just, no idea. What, what is it? What is it that we would really, really need an answer for as a community if we want to keep existing? Uh, I love panels and Panoply and all these approaches to layout. They're really cool. But that little phrase on the website, React-based Gutenberg editor, it is driving a lot of people a little crazy in the WordPress community, a lot of, a lot of love and hate for this tool. But um, we probably should have some kind of reaction uh, in some way, right, other than just like a thing that you can dump blocks into. I mean, I love Drupal, love how powerful it is, but... UX, I mean, WordPress just blows us out of the water. Unfortunate for WordPress by this decision, you'll see that something blows WordPress out of the water. I can't think of what it is. That's, uh, oh, that's right. All modern website tonight software that is getting pretty darn good at building pretty reasonably sophisticated websites. Uh, but all of that stuff is closed source, at least the part you want, right? Which is the usability part. So what have we been building? something way beyond, hopefully, what they're doing, right? They're doing this, they're doing, yeah, yeah, I can take a paragraph, I can move it up and down, I can drag and drop, whatever. I don't care about that. Let's get into stuff that's more sophisticated than that. Um, let's say a designed element, right? And I can reposition the designed element. Again, who cares? I can move a designed element up and down. Again, who cares? Anybody could do that, right? It's not a big deal. I mean, I could, I could change the, the color of it in those, and dynamically throttle the, the text to make sure it's accessible. But I mean, anybody could do those things. They're really not that big a deal to build a, a user experience like this that's completely open source and available uh, for any content management system. Um, I mean, it's just, why would I do that? Why would I do things like that? When I have website tonight software, like why pitch a really complex, expensive build uh, system when I have website tonight software, I'm just, just, I mean, just, I don't know why I just, not that, not that we have that, but if, if we had decoupled website tonight software, what would that look and work like? How could that change the equation? If we weren't all building into our content management solutions and other static site generators, the UX pattern, right? We already are borrowing buttons and assets and all these things from other places anyway. So what if we, Kick it up a notch. If we said, uh, you know, I know you like YouTube, so just just throw YouTube in there, right? Everybody uses YouTube, right? If I want it to be responsive, just make it responsive. If I want it to be blue, cool. Yep, there's that color thing again. If I want to just keep using those patterns, why can't I just keep repurposing those design patterns? Why do I have to make something as fun, or fun, <laughs> fundamental as go get a YouTube video? Why do I have to build that into something like Drupal? Why does that have to be a ton of modules? Why does that have to be something to do search and, and find and, oh, geez, that also works with the video thing. And then also grabs the, the caption dynamically and 
huh? But, but like, why if, I mean, I'm going to have a content management. System. It's going to have all that integration in it. It's going to have that ultra specific backend code to do something simplistic on the front end that I as a developer love to write. I just love writing things over and over again. I mean, like if I want a NASA integration in Drupal, then I would just go get the NASA module and then I would display it. I have a consistent search form built for me dynamically based on a JSON feed. And then I could just search in real time NASA. Um, and then if I wanted to display it, I would have uh, one option or maybe two if I like wrote a hard coded template, not um, every option imaginable based on a very small JSON uh, package that's attached to, to the assets. Um, and the assets would be forced to work just with my one uh, system because that's how I like working. I don't, I don't want to make a funny meme, you know, <laughs> on top of the moon or anything. Or anything, you know, just to do it. Like, why would I, why would we even want to do that? My users don't want to do that. But like, if they could, like, then they, they could just use what it is we've been building. So, um, you know, these are completely pluggable. Every aspect of this on an input side is pluggable. Uh, heck, it's not even fully dependent on just searching things. Like searching isn't even that impressive. Um, it doesn't have to be built based on finding you know, uh, an input source. Maybe it's, you know, a Wikipedia element. Why did I make a Wikipedia element? Because I could, and it took like no time, but go get that module or plug in to do the ultra specific UX pattern for your content management system. Let's keep doing that. We need to keep that wheel running because if we don't have deep integration with the systems that we have been working with historically, then our users aren't even going to use them. Like what if, what if we didn't have that as a consideration? Right? What if we did have deep system integration, but still leveraged that headless authoring experience? What if we were inside our content management systems and I could just drag and drop an image and it would know, oh, I can save, me, I can save images here. And then it would go, oh, I know how to present images with these things. What if it already knew how to do that? What would that do if I could spell? I mean, it would do better things, but that's what we've been building. So that just saved to the Drupal file system, uh, that thing that I, that I pushed up there. I also could go and find stuff uh, already in the Drupal file system. Uh, so I can search against that, even find that thing that I pushed up or maybe find this cool cat picture. And so if I don't have any of these other options, these fancy ones, which are web components, I could just save it as a basic image, um, this creepy cat as a spider thing, um, and put in alt data because now we can read HTML primitives and we can work with against them. Um, and so all of that YouTube integration right in my CMS, right, right here. But it's not just a CMS because it's, it's decoupled. So it's, it's Elms, which I can hit save and I, I saved it and, you know, if I go back to viewing this thing and I have node 39 here, I have my, my image that I put in and I have my, my silly cat picture and I have a video that I reference. but it's not just there though. It, it could be in grav CMS. Why, why does it even have to be in the Drupal ecosystem? Why can't we be over here and do the exact same thing? What if I wanted to use Grav because it afforded me different things such as, you know, personal freedom um, to have my content in a very small, lightweight format? Like, why should my authoring experience be locked to the neat system we adopted or bought into? Why does that even have to be something modern? Why can't we progressively improve the past? Why can't we take our, you know, homage to Drupal 6, wonderful system at the time, but horrid by today's standards. But why couldn't we make that better than what we have currently? I mean, it would be a lot of code. Why would you go and write code to update those systems? Why would you go back in time and put effort into something that doesn't need, you know, just keep moving forward with the web, right? We've got all this cool new functionality in Drupal you know, X plus one, just like we'll have two years from now and five years from now. Why? Why? Because all of this is portable. All of this is on the front end. 
the entire thing. All of it's pluggable too. So these are not the same types of output styles that we had available in the Grav version or in the other Drupal site or in the Elm site. Why though? Why? Well, because I just didn't include them. It's literally in one file saying, hey, include these, and then we can pull those in. So we can pull in whatever, these, these are not, Hacks is not limited to these design assets that we're giving as like the initial, uh, you know, Lincoln logs, uh, Lego bricks, whatever you want to call them. I mean, we could be whatever you end up building. Um, it's incredibly easy to expose new things to hacks. Um, and then they work everywhere that we can make hacks work, which is just on the web. So like that video player was showing, it's also super readable because it's not, it's not tied to a backend in the same way. Oh, it was a git gutter thing. <laughs> um, but if we go down and see the part where this actually integrates with hacks, this is the part that makes this element work with hacks. It's a little JSON array or object that indicates, hey, if hacks is around, let it know that this is the way to edit me. Hacks manages the entire process with all those forms by reading off of this information, converting it to JSON schema, which is a standard for building forms out on the front end, and then actually just building them. So if we have Drupal deliver JSON schema or any backend system deliver JSON schema, we can start building forms off of it that are validated. Maybe even have secure keys, all right guys? So to recap, hacks coming along really well, looking really good, um, working in Backdrop CMS for some reason. Hmm, curious. But working in Backdrop, Drupal 6, Drupal 7, Elms Learning Network, and really isn't that much work to get it to work in Drupal 8, gang. I just can't put that effort there because I'm doing this other stuff and getting the team mobilized on all the other cool visual assets we haven't released yet for hacks. So the other thing, yeah. There's another thing here. This now um, has support for Drupal tokens. And this is where I think there's even a game change beyond what this currently does. So, you know, I write text and eventually we're gonna get into layout based considerations and that's all gonna be cool. But you're still gonna say, well, I've got all this entity structure in Drupal. I don't care, sorry. This is like like really neat, powerful demo and it works anywhere and it's 100% open source. And it can start to take on Website Tonight software because it can run as a desktop app because we're building it simultaneously as a desktop app. That's all well and good. However, I need my Drupal tokens. And I'd say, yes, yes, you do need your Drupal tokens. So let's look at what a Drupal token uh, might look like in this. So let's edit this page, cheating a bit. So need the UX patterns to be refined a little bit more there. Go back to yesteryear where we've lost the battle for the body field. I'm gonna paste in what we all used to do, what I, what we still do, my users still do. Put in some type of token, have that token be evaluated and unpack to something else. Now what this will do instead is it'll skim those tokens off, escalate them to a custom element specific to Drupal. Finally, something Drupal related, right? I've only been doing all these videos for years and I don't do anything Drupal related anymore. So we've got a Drupal token and that token takes the token in question that it found while it was building and then it goes and makes a request and puts the token in place. It's kinda, kinda pretty neat. Well, what if we hacksified the Drupal token? So if we hacksified the Drupal token, then as these things load, I should be able to select one, which the selection box could certainly use some work on that regard, but I could make a gizmo, we could use a token, and then I could dump in that token and we render it. But it, that's an Elms token, you say. I, I don't use Elms, yeah, don't worry, like no one does. So, but if we did render, Right, we could do a, a, a node based or an entity token rather, say uh, entity render full node 12, 15, 
One of you are. I know you're in here somewhere. <laughs> there it is. There's the syntax. It's missing the syntax. It's an embed. Embed. Render. Full node. There it was. <laughs> Couldn't think of the name. So if I had a, there we go. There's node five. So this is a normal Drupal token, right? This is a uh, entity token embed. Embed render full node five. If we built a JSON schema, we knew how to modify this or searched against, um, you know, just like we have with the entity, the token system, where you have a little token browser. If we made one of those and baked it in here, then we start searching our Drupal stuff in here, selecting it through the prompts, sending it over to this form, which has all been done in a very decoupled manner. Now we've got like two or three assets talking to a backend and very minimal backend code, I assure you in this case. And we have this crazy uh, UX pattern on the front end. So this is, you know, the secret plan. So what we're going for. Um, decoupled Drupal is all well and good. You can do some really impressive rendered things, uh, things you couldn't do with a template engine, no matter what the template engine was, just because of the complexity. Um, you know, Contenta, we've looked at Contenta. Contenta's awesome, but you're, and then you're gonna need to bring along an authoring experience for that, um, which is, is where we're trying to come in. So this is kind of the state of, of hacks. You can go to hacktheweb.org, check it out. You can hit our export button and see that all the stuff that you produce in any of these things, you can download and then you can read through what that HTML that was offer, authored for you, try and figure out what it was, help us improve upon it. Um, these are all approaches that the individual elements, in this case, right, just never knew it was edited with hacks. Uh, this is something that really we could dump into Drupal sites now. We actually have started to. Uh, we started having some of these elements show up in our Drupal-based sites and, and our non-Drupal-based sites for that matter uh, because we're not wasting effort building specific pieces for specific systems anymore. We're just building it for the web and then making it be exposed to hacks um, so that hacks can edit it down the road. If someone puts this into traditional HTML page, okay, cool. Uh, they've written less code. They get a really accessible you know, video player or super fun, that jiffy thing, <laughs> but um, yeah, so this has is, is been kind of a preview of where we're at with hacks. Um, if you wanna get in, involved or find out more, go on uh, twitter.com slash E-L-M-S-L-N or on BTO Pro on Twitter, talk of, basically I've been live tweeting uh, the development efforts of this, um, so yeah. Look forward to seeing you soon.